When I was 15, I heard that if I slept with a textbook under my pillow, the information would enter my head via osmosis. When I was doing my French GCSE, I was convinced that if I listened to myself speaking French on loop every day while I was asleep, somehow I'd become fluent. Over the years, I've learned a lot more about the basic science of learning, and I feel like there are just so many study myths which need to be busted. We're generally not taught how to study, and so a lot of how we end up revising is trial and error or things we've heard from people. I hope this video helps you study smarter, not harder. Let's talk about study myths and what you should do instead. This video is also very kindly sponsored by Markup. In my book, The Only Study Guide You'll Ever Need, I discussed a basic framework, some questions that you can ask yourself to turn sad, miserable, ineffective study techniques into something I call sad revision techniques. If you can fulfill the criteria of S, A, A, and D, then you have got an evidence-based, scientifically backed revision technique, which is actually gonna serve you well for exams based off of research. Throughout this video, I'm gonna come back to the SAD framework and maybe you'll find it useful to help you remember some of the things we're gonna talk about. The first big myth is studying longer, not smarter. We've all seen them on YouTube. 12 hour study with me. 10 hour all night, non-stop study with me. There is no greater feeling, no bigger ego boost than sitting at your desk consistently non-stop and studying. Not taking a single break because, you know, you're just a revision god. I'm sorry to say, longer does not equal better. Rather than studying for longer hours, study more frequently and more strategically. This is the forgetting curve of human memory. Every time you learn something new, your memory is at 100%. Imagine Imagine if we just meet and you tell me that your name is Charlotte. For the first few minutes, I've got it in my brain, but the issue is with human memory is that it exponentially starts to decay. At the end of the party, at the end of the day, I might not remember your name anymore. But as you can see in this curve, if you revisit the same information at regularly increasing intervals, then you can boost your memory back up to 100%. For example, one hour after meeting you, I recall to myself, ah, oh, your name is Charlotte. Then at the end of the day, I recall to myself, ah, oh, her name was Charlotte. Ah, oh, five days later, what was her name? It was Charlotte. A week later, her name was Charlotte, and all of a sudden, it is ingrained in my long-term memory what your name was. This is the S in a sad revision technique. S is for spaced repetition. Don't study for longer, study more strategically. Studying 10 hours in the library without breaks is not a power move. Number two, big study myth. We often think that passively highlighting is helping us learn the information. Highlighting your textbook, highlighting text is not you memorizing information. Rereading and highlighting are like the start of the study process. You know, like when you're trying to find the information that you're gonna put onto your flashcards or the information that you're gonna try and make yourself learn. Like it is useful to go through and highlight these tidbits to reread it to yourself but research has shown that these techniques don't actually ingrain these things into your memory. So you've still got to do it. This very conveniently brings me onto the sponsor of today's video, Markup. If you're reading a lot of academic articles, consuming a lot of information, and you keep flitting between note-taking softwares to try and capture it all, Markup is so incredible for organizing this information and for highlighting text in a meaningful way. They have such a cool Chrome extension where you can highlight and save articles. You can put little helpful tags, you can auto summarize to help your learning. And then it's so easy, you just go to My markups you've got all your saved web pages there i've literally become obsessed with using this for university every time i have a new essay to write i compile all my articles in one workspace on markup i used to always lose articles and it was a huge issue when i came to cite them but now i just head to my little workspace over there and i don't know if you followed my new year's resolutions video but if you did you would know that one of my goals for this year is to learn more about decentralized finance and crypto i finally started bringing together all my resources on climate back to crypto and it's just so much easier to access everything and look at the notes I've written. When you're first learning something new it is so important to centralize that information so if you're looking to improve your workflow download markup below. So you've gathered your information you've highlighted it but the biggest myth is people thinking that that is going to be enough to then go into an exam and put that information into a paper. When we're highlighting or rereading it's something called a passive technique. We're reading through the information and we feel like we know it because obviously it makes sense. If I'm looking at a diagram and they've given me all the labels, I'm gonna nod to myself and be like, yeah, that's correct. And I'll be like, yeah, I understand that. But the issue is understanding is not the same as knowing. Which brings me on to the second A, 
of the SAAD sad revision techniques and that is active recall. Any technique where you're actually having to think is a good one. Techniques where the information is not just given to you, you have to answer questions, you have to summarize information from memory, you have to recall information on a flashcard or blurt out what you can remember from a certain chapter. Techniques which are hard and use brain power are generally the better ones. Number three, not building on the foundations of what you already know. It's so tempting to learn new content in isolation, but it's been proven that the more you can relate new information to stuff that you already know, the more you're gonna remember it. Coming back to the example of someone telling me their name, imagine you told me your name is Charlotte. If I treat this fact as something totally new, I'm not gonna remember it as well as if I look at the name Charlotte and think, what does that name mean to me? Do I know someone with the name Charlotte? Does this person look anything like the Charlottes I know? Do I think that they look like a Charlotte? Having this mental conversation with yourself about what you already know about this topic or this piece of information is strengthening it because you're creating connections about this new piece to the foundations of what you already know. You can do this in the classroom and when you're studying. For example, when the teacher is taking you through a new concept, you can be making notes like, oh, that relates to this thing we did a few classes ago. Oh, like that reminds me of this random thing in a different class. Every time you make these links, you are literally creating neural links in your brain between these pieces of information. And the more neural links there are, the easier it is to just access that information. This is the second A in a sad revision technique. A is for associations. Just to do some space repetition, going back through S-A-A-D, what we have so far. So S is space repetition, combating that forgetting curve of human memory by considering consistently going over things. A, it's for active recall, so using techniques where you're really thinking, you're actively drawing that information out of your brain. And then the second A here, we have associations. How can you relate new information to the foundations of information you already know? Four, another revision myth, doing what's easy. You need what's called in the research literature, desirable difficulty. If you know you love English literature and it's so easy to do, then obviously you're gonna want to revise that more. You're gonna wanna go back over your text, but that's not desirably difficult. If it's easy, you're probably not learning that much. Instead, you need to identify your weak points and lean into them. You're like, you know that problem subject that you just hate? Like for me, A-level chemistry was just an issue. So I just didn't wanna look at it as much. Find it and focus your attention there until it feels easier. D is for desirable difficulty. Difficulty. If your studying feels a bit difficult, if it feels like you're using your brain, that's good. That's probably the right thing. If your flashcards are too easy, try a past paper. If the past paper is way too hard, then meet in the middle and do practice questions in the textbook. Just like find the level of difficulty that you need for it to be challenging, but good enough. Number five, another study myth I often see is just studying in a place where you do everything else. This is really hard because obviously we all have constraints. Like at university, I often end up working in my bed. And the myth here is like, oh, like I can study anywhere, it'll be fine, right? Like it doesn't affect my productivity, but it does. <laughs> Research shows that your brain just tends to associate certain activities with certain spaces. So if you can try and have a space which is dedicated only to deep focus studying, whether it's a desk, whether it's going to a library or a certain cafe, just be disciplined disciplined with yourself that when you're there, you're actually working. Like you're not going on your phone, you're not relaxing. And then the beauty is that every time you come to that space, it's just less work. Like your brain knows what to expect in this place. It's so easy to just think that spending time at your desk is helping you in some way to do with your studies. And while that's true to an extent, like obviously putting in more time is gonna help you in some way. If you don't know where you're going, it's kind of hard to know what to revise, how much energy to put into that revision, why you're trying. It's tempting to treat each end of chapter test as a place to just test where your knowledge is at and not actually study for it. We've all done it. But yeah, set some goals. Look at what motivates you. Are you trying to get into a certain university? Are you trying to improve your grade in one subject? For example, if you know that your goal is to do well in chemistry and you hate chemistry, then all of a sudden you have more motivation to go ask for help, to see your teacher, to find more past paper questions because you've set that goal in your mind that you actually want to do well in this. And finally, number seven, don't multitask. How many of you are currently doing something else while watching this video? I'm not trying to out you, like I literally do it all the time, just having a YouTube video in the back. 
guilty. But multitasking is just not it. Like watching the TV and doing flashcards, not it. <laughs> we just don't really have the capacity to be doing multiple things well. Like it just feels like a cop out. It's like an ego boost again, right? It's like, oh yeah, I'm actually like, I'm working, I'm studying. And like you're half relaxing, half studying, but you're not actually doing either well. Like you're not actually revising well but you're also not really relaxing so yeah just be be more intentional if you're studying then study don't like go on your phone every now and then equally if you're taking breaks like actually take a break enjoy your life that's all from me today i hope you can turn some miserable revision techniques into effective sad revision techniques <laughs> comment down below which of these myths you often fall prey to the most like for me multitasking working in my bed, passively rereading because it just feels good. What do you struggle with? Because it might make someone else feel less alone. Also, reflecting on your own experience now to comment something is actually making an association, coming back to like that A in standard revision techniques, an association between this new information I've just told you and the foundations of your life. Like you answering that question, oh, like which one of these myths do I actually fall prey to? That is you having to recall the myths I've just told you, having to relate it to your life and like link it back to things you already know so that you're more likely to remember them. Have an amazing day. Thank you so much for being here and have a productive and motivated and inspired and balanced week. Very quickly, my casual magic of the day is my Chinese money plant. It's growing so much. It's so cute. I'm like not the best plant mom. I really want to be, but I'm not. And this just makes me very happy. <laughs> okay, bye.